Cats, hey everyone, this is Kelvin. Welcome to episode 60, Res Metal Podcast. For this episode, I thought I'd revisit an interview I did with Tyler Johnson. He's a good friend of mine. We both went to high school together. We actually uh, roomed together at Flagstaff Bordertown Dormitory. And um, I spoke with him about three years ago now. This, uh, this interview was recorded on May 18th of 2019 back when I was living in Phoenix and you know Tyler uh, is also you know still in the Phoenix area but uh, this is actually the first interview I did uh, for for this podcast so you know it was really cool that Tyler was able to um, you know invite me to his home and you know we talked and kind of just caught up because um, you know we we didn't really get a chance to, you know, kind of sit down and talk for a long time. So uh, I think what you'll be hearing is just a uh, kind of a talk with uh, two friends who, you know, um, kind of separated after high school and then we kind of like did our own thing and then kind of, uh, kind of reconnected uh, living in Phoenix. And so kind of, it's kind of, um, that's what you'll be hearing. So it's really, really interesting. and. I'm actually excited to hear this uh, interview again. Haven't heard it in a while, but um, yeah, more about Tyler. He's you know originally from uh, I think the Kienta, Arizona area on the Navajo Reservation, and um, he's been doing uh, silversmith work for a number of years now, and he's actually quite accomplished, and he's been able to produce some really high quality silver jewelry for many you know famous people so i would um yeah suggest you know checking out some of his work on his instagram page um also he has a website and um yeah just you know take a look at all the cool stuff he's you know making and um yeah he's he's really quite accomplished and you know it's really cool to see him uh do that and um yeah i was just you know kind of glad that he to let me you know talk with him you know i went over to his house and you know we kind of talked in his workshop and if the sound quality is not if it doesn't sound you know up to par it's because i recorded it on my cell phone you know i didn't have a uh, microphones or recorders or anything like that so you know i just kind of you know went there with my phone and you know had a good talk with uh tyler so hope everyone enjoys this and um you know, I'll be continuing to do this and reaching out to, you know, you know, bands, um, artists and creative people. So yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks everyone. And I uh, hope you like this uh, throwback episode. Yeah. I remember like, yeah, we were at flag high and then I remember you were in a couple of bands. Were they, were you in before flag high or when we were at flag born? Yeah. Well, we had, um, so it's 2000, 2003 is when we were at Flag Dorm, right? Yeah. And um, before that, my brothers, my cousin brothers, had formed a band called Region 6 with their friends, and then their friends ended up quitting. And so it was my, my cousin brother, Bobby, my bro, um, Wade and Wilteen, and I, we started um, doing some cover songs. And we decided to form a band, and we called it Abysmal Descent. No, actually, oh. we called it... Um, Spirit of Fire is what we call oh, it. Oh, yeah, okay. So we're all pumped up about Spirit of Fire. <laughs> and um, I ended up going to Flag Dorm with Troy. Really yeah, there. yeah. And, um, how, did, how did you guys, like, find out about Flag Dorm? Was it just your parents, or...? Um, initially, it was... Um, see, I thought my brothers, my cousin brothers, were going to go back to Flag, to Coconino yeah. High School. And my parents had heard about Flag Dorm. So they told us about it and we're like, oh, okay, yeah, get a chance to get out of Red Lake. Because yeah. at that time, when we were living in Red Lake, yeah. all we were living in was like a Hogan. Uh -huh. And uh, during that time, we didn't have any electricity or running water. Yeah. So we figured it was probably better than staying in the Hogan or give yeah. us a chance to yeah. kind of get out of, get off the res for a little bit. Yeah. All right. And uh, that's, I think it was easier financially on my parents because... Yeah. They didn't have to take care of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, same with uh, my, my parents because 
you know, my, all of my siblings, we all went to the flag dorm. Like my older brother, he graduated, I think the year before you came. Yeah. I had an older sister that graduated in 2001. And then my oldest sister graduated in 92. Oh. And then my younger brother graduated in 2009 and we all like went to the dorm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just, uh, I, I know like my mom knew the, the director of the dorm. Mm-hmm. So then I guess like, um, cause like we, we lived in Joseph City, you know, yeah. the, uh, like between Holbrook and Winslow. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah. technically we weren't on the res. Okay, yeah. But since my mom knew the dorm director, uh, we got, um, yeah, we got like into the dorms just because of that. Cool. But um, I don't know. I think yeah. I, I think it's just a better school system too. Cause I don't know if you know where Joseph like been in Joseph City. Yeah, that's where that um uh, power plant, power APS Cho- uh, Choya power plant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's just small like re- uh, Mormon town. Yeah. There's probably like maybe five or six Navajo families, and they're just it's super prejudiced too. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the school system is like, you know, terrible. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I guess it's probably just like Flagstaff had better schools, and I mean, like you know, better teachers and better education. Yeah. But um. Yeah, I think that was the thing too. Was better education. Yeah. I remember uh, all the kids at the dorm. It seems like you know how like. It was all kind of like broken up into small groups, like cliques. And yeah. I think most of it was like based on like what type of music people liked, you know? Yeah, of course. It was like the metal kids, the, the hip hop kids, and the, the NAC, uh, POD, <laughs> POD uh, uh, you know, music yeah. guys. So I always thought that was funny. Yeah, plus it depended on what sport they were into. Oh, yeah, that. yeah. Like all the sports dudes hung out and. I remember all the skateboarders and BMX dudes would hang out. Yeah. yeah. I was like, remember um, when we first got into the dorm, we were all listening to our metal music, and then yeah. the guys next door, right next to us, yeah. were all listening to their hip hop and kept oh, man. And then yeah. we almost got, almost got into a fight, and I was like, yeah. ready to brawl that dude out. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, man, I just got here. I don't yeah. want to get kicked out. It's like, it's like prison. You got to like beat someone up on your first day or your first week to. Yeah. Or, no, I don't know. One time too, like I think um, the, after you left, uh, my twelfth grade year, I remember like the night I was supposed the, the yeah the the night before I was supposed to take the ACT test, the guys next door like were cranking their like you know rap music like really they're all like high and drunk and yeah. I was like pissed off like because I had to take my tests you know and the yeah. ACT tests I I forgot I think I got up and I kicked the wall really hard and then like the something happened to their music and they just cut out oh, <laughs> because you know you have like a CD player yeah that. yeah because like we shared the same wall I kicked the wall yeah and then the music stopped and then the dudes were like you know like wasted they like wanted to come to my room and they're like you know try to break in I had to pull the bunk bed to like uh, push the door yeah keep the door keep them from coming in yeah they were like they were gonna they were gonna like they were gonna like just kick my ass but like yeah I'm just like oh damn it what? I was just like oh, I'm just like you know trying to cover my ears like I need to go to sleep I gotta take a test damn I think um whoever the dorm you know dorm okay. aides, yeah was like that night like told them to cut it out and yeah I think they finally like <coughs> I don't know if they left I just remember like they just like it was just quiet all of a sudden but yeah. Yeah, it was it was uh it was weird. And we got a lot of with a lot of shit over. There. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. surprised they didn't try crawling over in between the. the yeah, well, they're they're really, I think they're like big guys. They're fat. They can oh, fit okay. through. Yeah, I remember I could fit through. I was really skinny. Yeah, I remember Troy would do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. But yeah, no, I remember. Yeah, we. Uh, I think that's kind of how we got along. It's just because we would listen to metal. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I remember listening to like the mainstream, like old school metal. Yeah. And then he started like introduced to me and more, more heavy stuff and. Yeah. And then um, I knew a little bit of black metal. Yeah. Like Children of Buddha and a little bit of Cradle of Phil. Yeah. Some Dark Throne and some Mortal and stuff. But then you were showing, didn't you show me like At the Gates and yeah, The well, Crown? Well, what happened was, um, 
uh, I had a magazine. It was like a metal magazine, you know, you, like from like Barnes and Noble or something. Metal mini, mini Yeah, things. it was like something like that, and they, it had like a like the top fifty like metal albums of all time or some something like that. Yeah. And like I got that magazine, and I would just like read it, and then I would try to like get every CD that was in that or you know every album that was in that magazine. Yeah. Like I think like at the gates was in there like um i don't know all the others you know like iron maiden metallica um like carcass mm-hmm. uh, it was like yeah it was just a list that i, I just that's kind of just how i found out about most of those bands yeah um, and then yeah because like i got into like corn and like slipknot when i was like in like eighth grade or something like seventh or eighth grade yeah and then I kind of just listened to that, and then I think, like, yeah, going to the dorm, and then, you know, because, like, the, there was, like, that music store downtown. Yeah, that was, like, an underground music yeah, store. Yeah, yeah, that place, and then, like, Bookman's and Hastings. Yeah. Like, they had metal sections, so then, I like, there was, you know, other stuff to, like, get into. Yeah. Sometimes I just go over there and pick out the, like the most hardcore looking covers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And just like, you know, it's not like now where you can just sample the music. Yeah, and yeah. Buy it, you know, you know, like take a yeah, fifth whole fifteen dollars, which is like your month saving or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That was just take a risk and yeah, buy an album. Because I like you, I, you would I would buy like an album and I, I would have that would be my the only album I would have for like a month, you know. Yeah. So it's like just on a constant rotation. Yeah. Now it's like, yeah, I, I, I subscribed to like a couple of like the, I think it was like um, Amazon Music. Mm-hmm. It's just too much. I, I have to stop because like you can like literally listen to anything and yeah. it's like, I don't know. I think I just like, if I have the actual like CD, then I, I listen to it like from beginning to end Yeah. versus like if, it, if I'm like streaming it, like. And I'll listen to like half a song, and then I'll get bored, then I'll like skip it. Like I didn't, I never listened to the whole yeah, like the whole album. Yeah, well, buying a whole CD is like uh, like a uh, kind of like a whole experience. Yeah, you, know, you have, yeah. You, know, you can feel it, you can see it, and then yeah. you can see what kind of work they put into it. Yeah, take out the the cover, and then look through yeah. the, the pictures and the lyrics if they have it and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um. Or like, um, I would like look at the credits, you know, look at like, like who they who, think. Yeah, the thank you list, the uh, artists. I always wanted to know who the, who did the cover art. Yeah, because then like I would I don't know just to just to like you know because then if I see that same style or that same artwork on another band, then I'll I'll like yeah I'll probably check it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think I just kept listening to the same stuff after, like, I remember you, because you left uh, that one after the 11th grade, right? And then you yeah. went back to... Tuba. Tuba, yeah. Were you still, were you doing bands out there? Yeah, we started up again after I went back and uh, really hit it hard. Um, well, mostly doing covers, played a little bit of local shows. And then we all graduated in 2004. My old brother Bobby went to, um, he ended up graduating in 2003. And then, uh, so me, my, me, Wade, we kind of reformed a band and then we started playing jamming shows all around Tuba City. Mm-hmm. And then we took it, took the bands to like Farmington. Yeah. Then we went to like Winslow <laughs> and then Kianta yeah. a few times. Wow. So, and then we would make our own little shows. We would just, yeah, we'd invite bands out, and then yeah, we charge like five dollars at the door or something like that yeah. at the chapter house, and then pay them back, pay the bands back, yeah. the gas money, you know. Like, hey man, we, you know this is all we, this is all we can give you, you know. Yeah, and they'd be all cool with it, and we'd all party out and, <laughs> and, and stuff. Yeah, what band was that that you were touring with? Oh, uh, uh, well, it wasn't really like touring with them, or or like but, like well, playing shows with, yeah. Um, no, Ritual Homicide was one. Um, Existence AD. Yeah. Um, Sacred Blood. Yeah. Who else? And some other, like, you know, just kind of like real small bands. Yeah. 
and like right now I can't really remember all of them. Yeah. I probably have a flyer in one of my notebooks somewhere <laughs> of all the bands that, that were that we got yeah. together one time. Yeah. What kind of what kind of uh, style was it? Let's see. We played um, Iced Earth. We played a couple of songs of Iced Earth songs, uh, like Watching Over Me and uh, what the other one was called. And we played uh, Exodus. Mm-hmm. Played some uh, Mon Garth. Yeah. Uh, Slayer, of course. Metallica, of course. And there was one other band. Yeah, it slips my mind right now. Yeah, like covers, cover songs. Yeah, cover songs. But we fucking just, even though we knew there were covers. Yeah. We still had a blast. That's cool. And um, we were writing our own music at the time too, but. It wasn't anything that we were ready to put out there. Or yeah, I don't even know how that works. Yeah, like I guess now it's easier with with um, like all the different like social media people just I don't know people catch on really quick. Yeah. But back then, yeah, I'm sure you had to like you know like relocate to like a like Phoenix or Albuquerque yeah. or something. Yeah, we had nothing, man. Yeah, we liked the bare essentials just to get us yeah. by. That's yeah. And um, Which, uh, did you sing or play guitar? Or? I play. I sing. Okay. Yeah. When I first started out, I tried playing the bass and singing, but we ended up finding a bass player, and then, and then, um, I just started singing from then on. Yeah. And it just kind of being the front man, jumping all over the place. <laughs> I remember one show, it was, and it was like a, you know, a res show, out in, on the outskirts of Tupac City. Yeah. And there was a, a wooden stage out there. But there was a bunch of punks, a bunch of metalheads, a bunch of like, you know, different jocks and stuff like that. And we're all hanging out and then we started playing and we started playing with um, Running Blood. And you know how the first part goes, the first part's really fast. Yeah. I jumped into the mosh pit because there was a little mosh pit and <laughs> the dirt was all flying. Yeah. I guess they're all like, my bro Wade was all jamming out and he's like, where does Tyler go? Makes me all I I jumped off and I'm <laughs> back on stage right when it needed to start and started singing and stuff. That was yeah. pretty fun. Damn. Yeah, no, I was always just like a, a follower. I never joined a band, but yeah. I don't know. I've always just like, yeah, I've always just kept listening to the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah, even, well, yeah, because I, I, after Flag, I went to U of A. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, even then I would just like, just, Every day or every like weekend, I would because I stayed at a dorm, yeah, and on campus, and I would just walk to the Zia record store. Like it was like maybe a two mile walk, and I would just walk over there like every weekend just to just I don't to, know just to just to go just to go get out know? of town or get out of the dorm yeah get, get off campus yeah yeah because yeah. like I didn't yeah no I didn't I think there's maybe might have been one dude from like the White River uh, Reservation who was who was in the same dorm and listen to metal I think we would go to shows like but uh, I think he only like was there for like less than a year and then he I think he like left school yeah so I don't know I was always just kind of a for a while I was I just would just study you know go to the library like I was I was still into skateboarding so I would just go skateboard yeah but um, that's why <laughs> that's why I have it oh yeah I can pause um, oh, oh. Well, I think they. Oh, okay. They give up usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I would like. I think I was kind of scared to go to concerts by myself too. Like there was always really? concerts every day, like or every weekend in Tucson. Like yeah. I think after, I think the first show I went to was like uh, Suffocation and Behemoth. Dang, that's and, bad. Um, that'd be badass. Man. And I think Cattle Decapitation was the opening band. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that was like a family like, no, actually I went with that one dude, that the metal dude, the guy that listened to metal in my in my dorm. Yeah. Well, I remember early because I would collect the little flyers and I would like be too scared to go like downtown to go check out a band. In college. Yeah, I don't really? know. I was like freaked out. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, because it's so like it'll be like on a Monday night or a Wednesday night. Yeah. And then you know I got like class. I don't know. I was like, a, I guess I was a pretty serious student, but. Yeah, like I didn't really. Well, you were always pretty kind of serious in yeah. high school, even too. 
Yeah, I always just want, I don't know, I always wanted to get my homework done. And I was like, yeah, I think like, I just didn't want to leave stuff, you know, I didn't like ignoring stuff. Yeah, like kind of like that. Um, showing up unprepared and the next morning for class, you know. Yeah. Um, kind of like a tick, not really a tick, but like a, how would you say that? Um, where you have to get it done. Yeah, like or a... Or else it'll keep bugging you. Like a... Like OCD, something yeah, OCD. like that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's uh, it, it's even like that now. I was studying today. Like, mm -hmm. Well, now like we don't have like we're not tested in residency. Yeah. Like I already I, I did. So everyone had to do like three board exams. So I I did all my three board exams and now it's one, the last board exam and that'll be next summer. Mm -hmm. So they tell us like you gotta be always you always gotta be studying for that. Yeah. So I was just doing some a little bit of studying this afternoon. Wow. Um, but yeah, I guess back then too. I guess I think going to the dorm, back to Flag Dorm, was just. I think that's where I kind of picked up a good study habit. Yeah, because you know how we had study hall from like, I forgot from like seven o'clock to like nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. Like it was mandatory. Yeah. Well, it was mandatory if you were like I think for some people, but. Cause like you know they would have the tutors like in the cafeteria, mm -hmm. like I went to it every night. Like I think I never missed it. And I always used the tutors to explain yeah. stuff to me. Um, I think that's probably where yeah I kind of like yeah like you said developed a good study habit. Yeah. Um, I could have studied harder, but I guess I don't know. I was just kind of like too a little more reckless, I guess. Not really as focused as I should have been. Oh no! Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Especially with like the way I kind of grew up, you know. Yeah. But um. That's cool. At least you had some cool like experiences. Yeah. Yeah, like I didn't go out. I didn't. Like, I don't think I drank at all in high school. Or. Yeah, I wasn't even sure if you still drink. Yeah, I mean, every now and then, like, I I, I drank a lot mostly through college, mm -hmm. and then kind of slowed down like when I started medical school. Like, I would still, like, kind of, you know, just hang out yeah. with, like, my classmates. And then, um, residency, dude, it was, like, a whole different, like, just a whole different lifestyle. Like, everything changed. Like, like even just having, like, one drink, I'll, like, be, like, I'll, I'll have, like, a headache the next morning. Oh, yeah. And even now, too, like, you know, when especially when, when you're on a call month, like, your brain has to be working, like, for, as soon as you get there. Yeah. Because as soon as you walk in, you never know what will happen. You have to happen. always be sharp. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's like, um, that's like, because like, we, this is a call month for me. So the meaning, like, it's longer hours. Um, and yeah, those months are, are pretty brutal. Last month was easy. I was like on an like, elective, like it didn't require. Yeah. Like I was there from like eight to four and I had like a one hour lunch break. And even then, like, it wasn't, like, it wasn't busy at all. All nice and chill. Yeah. Dang. But now it's, like, like, as soon as I get there in the morning, I'm gonna, I know I got to, like, because you got to go read, <coughs> you know, go get in the charts and start, like, processing all this information. And, yeah. yeah it's just, Catch up from all the, the patients at night. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, you know, um, there's a, the charts, like, the, for the all the patients. Mm -hmm. So... You got to catch up. You got to read all because I can't read the charts from home. Yeah. Um, so I got to go back and read like two days worth of like charts, and I just kind of have to like you know start putting the pieces together in my head. And, yeah. Um, Plus you have to memorize everybody too. Yeah, yeah that's hard too because like if I work the schedule I'm on, it's like two days. I work two days and then I'm kind of off two days. So then. And the same and, people aren't there. Yeah, that's it's really high turnover at the VA. Like oh, people okay. will get admitted one night and then they'll be gone the next day, or uh, they'll be transferred. So yeah, um, banners the the banner because Banner Hospital is kind of like where we're uh, mostly based out of. Yeah. Over there, it's the patients are sicker and they're usually there longer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I I mean I. I still drink here and there, but I just gotta pick and choose. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, just gotta. I don't know. Well, I mean, I haven't really, I haven't really been drinking a lot since I since I started or since I moved here. Like, yeah, 
which was July, no, June 2017. Mm -hmm. So almost two years now. I drank a lot in high school. I mean, you know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Almost all, pretty much overdosed a few times in the dorms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all stupid, man. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just, it was cool. I mean, at least the dorm were, were, I mean, you know, they weren't like super strict, you know, they, yeah. I think a lot of them like probably, they probably realized like, or they, they probably had similar high school experiences. So then yeah. they kind of let stuff slide a little. Yeah. Plus they probably knew our, our home life wasn't that good too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I know some of them were really like lenient. Um, yeah. It was mostly the, you know, the, the guy, the male dorm mates. Yeah. They would just let, they would like look the other way, like if something was going down. Yeah. Unless there was a fight, I think that's the only time they would like step in and, yeah. um, you know, call their, call some kids' parents. Yeah. But if they're just like, you know, they're just drinking a little, usually, you know, they were, they didn't, Chill, yeah. yeah, yeah, they weren't too strict. Yeah, um, I remember we boxed a few times in the laundry room. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember I got rocked by this uh, junior because we were sophomores, and I got rocked by this. Junior. Yeah, that that junior guy was like real stout though, man. Yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, he's like, I think he had short hair. And I he forgot his name. Yeah, hit me, man. And I just saw uh, stars. So I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, he had probably a concussion. Like, yeah, <laughs> that dude was tough. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, you know, it's like it's like prison, like a prison yard. You gotta like yeah, you gotta yeah. kind of establish yourself. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. No, I, I, I like I tried to stood up the one guy that that um well we were arguing about the music and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, after that, you know, he kind of left me alone, and then later on, he was trying to be my bro. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember hanging out with him later on in the year in his dorm room, and like we'd be lifting weights. Yeah. And. Um, like I, lift, I was lifting it just as much as they were, you know. Uh -huh. So like, oh, okay. So this guy must be pretty strong. You know, this guy <laughs> must be cool too, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like. Yeah, it's like um, yeah, you can't you can't like show you, uh, <laughs> yeah you can't show weakness like especially if you're in front of like if there's a you know like you know like with a TV area yeah if someone like like you know like embarrasses you or makes you look weak. Like that'll, that, I think that'll haunt you the rest of your, yeah, your year. Like it'll, 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 it'll make or break your, your, um, basically your <laughs> reputation. Yeah, I think that's why there's a lot of like macho attitude, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, yeah, it's it's tough. Like you really gotta, I mean, yeah, you gotta fit in, but then at the same time, you don't want to look like you know, like you're weak. Yeah. Um. And then you gotta go to school. I don't know. There's like all these like weird little layers, you know. Well, there's like clicks at the at dorm. Then there's clicks at school. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's actually kind of it's kind of hard. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because like I don't know. I guess like balancing like your dorm life with like your academics, I think, is tough. Because I I think a lot of people went to college in the year the people I graduated with. Yeah. It might have been like two guys and maybe like two or three girls that ended up going to college. I probably would have went to college like sooner. Yeah. If I would have stayed there because um, when I went to high school, when I went back to the city, um, I had applied, you know, just to get out of class, I had applied to several different, you know, they take you out of class and you can go to this little college fair. Oh yeah. And you can apply to all these different yeah. colleges. So that's what I did. And I ended up getting a scholarship, a pretty good scholarship to mm -hmm. like that small community college mm -hmm. in, um, in Blanding, Utah. And and I didn't know about it for like over, almost close to a year mm -hmm. until they contacted me. Like I finally, like I got a, something in the mail and um, they had sent all the information to my to my school counselor, and he never forwarded it to us. Mm -hmm. He never let me know, you know, after I graduated or anything like that. So like, I could have been, I could have been in school like right after, right after high school or right after high school and stuff. Yeah. But, um, but it was probably good because I, after I got out of, out of um, hold on, baby. After I got out of high school, 
I've worked construction mm -hmm. and um, tried doing the band thing. Hey, sorry to interrupt. So I interviewed Tyler in three parts. So I'm editing these parts together. So this is the next part of the interview. So I hope you enjoy. Well, I actually grew up in Kanta. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Kanta, um, all the way up until my junior year, or my sophomore. Yeah. My uh, freshman year in high school. Oh, yeah? After my freshman year in high school. Oh, okay. Until I was freshman year. You went to MB? And my sophomore year, I went to, we, went, we moved to Red Lake. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I grew up there. Yeah, were you uh, EDG? Was EDG was big out there? Ethnic Degeneration? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I kind of got to know them. And uh, went to high school with the, like, the drummer and stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I know the singer, Billy. Well, I don't like know him, know him, but I. Yeah, yeah. He knows him who I am, and you know, we've oh, seen yeah. each other at shows yeah. too. We've actually played at a few of their shows. Oh, nice. When we're doing the Res Band thing. Yeah. Yeah, I know they're big. They're like, that's like their area, huh? MB yeah. or uh, Kanta's ethnic degeneration. Yep. Uh, <laughs> their hometown. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I mean, I gotta. I, I really want to check out some band, like more. Like actually go to the res and check out some bands. But, but it's kind of nice living here in Phoenix because then you can always like check out a metal show. Like, yeah, it's like they're just they're, like you don't have to like. Like I saw uh, Slayer uh, two weeks ago. That's yeah, like, it was awesome. Yeah. Um, because when I was in med school, I was in North Dakota for med school. Uh -huh. Um, I saw Slayer in Fargo, but I had to drive three hours just to see him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like coming from the Rams. Like, yeah. Here. Like the show was over, and then I just bought like some coffee or like an energy drink and just drove Came home back. like yeah. at three in the morning. Like, Dang. That's a that I hate that, but. Yeah. Yeah. That's I guess that's the kind that's the one of the nice things about living here. Yeah. Um, I think I saw more more metal shows when I was living like in Page. Yeah. Than being down here. Yeah. Being down here is like trying to like survive and everything like that. Oh yeah. Work. Like, um, work family. And survive, yeah. yeah. Like last night I really wanted to see At the Gates. Not At the Gates. Was that At the Gates that played last night? Oh. Uh, at the gates, it was at the gates, wasn't it? We played last night. Really? It was at the gates? I uh, the only show I knew of was there's a free show like in Tempe. There's like yeah. some small band. No, it was a club. It was a club red. Oh, club red. Um, I know D side played. No, it was Death Angel. Death Angel. Oh yeah, man, I dude. totally forgot about that. Yeah, Death Angel. Dude, played I should have. Yeah, I didn't do anything last night. I was so sleepy from work. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't have the energy to, like, drive across town. I'm like, yeah. I was all talking, like, because we had to go to the graduation. Yeah. Where we had the reception. Yeah. So, you know, it's our way, all the yeah. way south, um, southeast of here. Yeah. And I was like, tell my wife, he should just drop, drop me off in Mesa, <laughs> man. I'll Uber back or something. Yeah, like, yeah. Because, you know? like, the headliner will probably, they don't start playing till like, 10, like, 9 30, 10 o'clock, you know? Yeah. Like, the flyer says like 7 p.m., but the headliner don't play till like 9.30. Yeah, and it was like 9.45. Yeah, like, you could, We got home at like 10 o'clock. It's like, dang, man, I should just take off, go back over there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, Death Angel is cool. They, I think they have a new album coming out, too. Yeah, I think they, the album did come out, but I haven't, I haven't listened to it yet. Yeah, yeah. I know tonight, uh, so I live on Indi like near Indian School. There's a show at the Rebel Lounge tonight. Oh yeah, I might check it out just because I, I I live like a mile away. Rebel the Rebel Lounge. Um, it's um Spirit Adrift. It's um you go like a just like a metal like you know doom yeah doom metal. Um, Skeleton Witch is supposed to be there. Yeah, there, I have to work that night though. On, I think it's Monday. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing too. I'm always working too. Like, yeah. I don't know, some of the best shows go down. Yeah. Like at Slayer, man, I had to go to work. Oh yeah, I I, I saw them. Like, I had to work that day, but I took off like as soon as I was done with work. And yeah. I brought my uh, clothes with me, so I didn't have to go home to change. And it was awesome, man, dude. There was so many people. Like, you know how that um, auction pavilion? There's like yeah. a lawn area. Yeah. Dude, people were moshing in that lawn area, and they were burning like. 
I don't know what they were burning, but I just saw like fire in the in the lawn area. What? Yeah, I I got seats, so I I uh, I, I didn't want to like stand in the pit or in the lawn. I I bought a ticket where there you can sit down. Yeah. So I basically just sat down and I was doing my um <coughs> basically studying on my phone that whole night. Yeah. Because I gotta try to do some studying, but yeah, it was it was good. I, I think I I miss Cannibal Corpse though because. Um, as soon as I got there, they already started. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then you have to, you know, wait in line to get through security. And buy your shirt. Yeah, I bought a shirt, bought some shirts, so I had to wait in line for that. And then by the time, by the time I got to my seat, Cannibal Corpse just finished. Oh, okay. But I think I've seen Cannibal Corpse like maybe five or six times though. Wow, just really? Because uh, when I was in Tucson at U of A, like they would, there was always a show there. Yeah, I think probably yeah. saw them like three or four times there. And then yeah, I saw saw Monomarth. Uh, they were good. They were they were good. Um, they had the the Viking ship on stage. Damn. Um, I think they I, they played like forty minutes. Yeah. Um, but I think it was mostly stuff from the last few albums. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't really play any of the old stuff. Um, and then Lamb of God. Lamb of God was cool. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Lamb of God, they always put on a good show. I've never really gone into Lamb of God for some reason. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, they're, um, they're, they're more, I'd say they're kind of like Pantera, you know? Like, yeah. Like the Pantera style. Mm-hmm. I think I got into them just because, um, you know, the Freddy vs. Jason movie, the soundtrack? Oh, I haven't listened to it. I haven't oh, watched yeah. the movie yet, yeah. Yeah, I, I, the sound, I had the soundtrack and, um, Black Dorm. And yeah. I think the last song was the Lamb of God song. Yeah. yeah that's how I got into them. Yeah. And then uh, it's funny, like all those those bands that you know that came out during that time. Like they're all old school now. <laughs> I know. Like it sucks. Kind of bums me out. Like, you know, those like Metallica, Slayer. They're getting old. They're all chase man. They're all grandpas. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And there's like no. I guess Lamb, because it looks like because Slayer. They've been touring the past like three years with Lamb of God, so yeah. I don't know. Kind of just pit, like, passing on the mantle. Yeah, I think they're trying to like maybe la- try to keep, um, or yeah, at least pass on their legacy to like Lamb of God. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Metallica they like tour every now and then. They're almost they're almost done. Yeah. Um, yeah, the last time they came into town, we ditched our kids. We're like, oh, we're going to pay bills. Yeah. You know, we left yeah. them with some babysitters. And yeah. We took off to the town. No, that's good. That, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, when you see, like, little kids in the concert and they're, they, don't, they're, they don't have earplugs on, I always, like... Cringe. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. Kind of just have to, like, walk away. <laughs> yeah. But, no, that's good. That's, that's, that's good you did that. Yeah. Did you watch the whole, like, set? Like... Yeah. Avenged Sevenfold and... Um, while we were setting a high one and Venge Sevenfold was on. Oh man, I really want to see Venge Sevenfold. Yeah. They put on a pretty good show, you know? Yeah. I think they could be like the next Metallica or, you know, at least take over for Metallica because... Yeah. Just because they're popular, you know, popular and... Yeah, they got a lot of catchy tunes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I like Venge Sevenfold. I didn't like them at first. I think when I was, like, in high school, like, you know, because they, they had, like, an emo look. Like, they had, they wore, like, eyeliner and... They had that new metal kind of like... Yeah, vibe. they had like an emo haircut, you know, with yeah. like the, the hair that's long on one side and short on another. And I don't know, that kind of like... Uh, maybe just their look kind of turned me off, but then... Yeah, I slowly kind of started like, you know, listening to their music, but they're... They're, they're great. You know? Yeah. Um, I bought tickets to their show last summer, but then they canceled and I got a refund. Wow. Yeah, no, that I saw Metallica too. That that same show, um, mm-hmm. but I missed I missed all the open. As soon as like me and my brother got there, Metallica started. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was hoping to like get there early and watch. I think Gojira was the opener. Yeah, I don't think we caught them. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. The Navajo Nation president was there, right? Uh, yeah. Jonathan Nez. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. There was a lot of natives there, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like, you could probably say like over like half the people there were natives. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome, man. Like. Yeah. I know every time I go to a show, there's like just natives everywhere. It's cool. Yep. 
Yeah. Show open doors for them. Yeah. No, it's cool. I mean, I guess it's always been like that, huh? Like, yeah. Like, natives always natives are always like drawn to metal. Well, I mean, it's kind of like split 50-50, right? It seems like country music. Well, I think mostly metal. Mostly metal. There's a lot of metal hits. Um, I haven't been, to, well, I can't say, I guess, because I haven't been to a lot of the pop shows or yeah. or country shows, but I know there's a lot of metal hits. Yeah. Like in, like in ratio to other, like uh, to white people, you know? Yeah. Or black people, you'd say. Yeah, that. yeah. You know, like there's way more natives than black people at shows. Yeah. Way more, like you'd say half half of the crowd could sometimes could be even native. Yeah. 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 I went to, uh, I saw D-Side uh, a couple nights ago. There's yeah, half, yeah. half, half, oh, half people that were native. I was going to, I wanted to see them, but I was working that night, man. I was so bummed. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good. I, yeah, it sucks you missed it, man. Um, yeah, the last time I almost saw D-Side, I got kicked out of um, the Orphan Theater in Flagstaff. <laughs> I called out this kid for being, this, this uh, security guard for being racist. Yeah. He was like, fuck you. I was like, fuck you. you yeah. Know? So you being a racist asshole. Yeah. He was fuck you, you're, you're fucking out of here, man. <laughs> I was like, fuck, man. Yeah. So I flipped him off and I walked off. I went around the Orphan Theater and I made buddies with like the people that were going to go on stage next. And then I ended up starting helping them load their stuff into the, the concert, yeah. into the Orphan Theater. And so when they went on stage, I went back into the wash pit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which was a mistake. I should have just stayed in the backstage yeah. area, you know. And then the security guard saw me in the wash pit. Yeah. He's like, hey, get that guy. <laughs> so there's a bunch of like security guards all trying to catch me and stuff. I'm all in the wash pit trying to avoid them, pushing them and stuff. Yeah. And next thing you know, my wife's like, yeah. I saw you being carried out by like five guys that are all like carrying you over to their, their shoulder. <laughs> and you're all struggling. <laughs> they took you out the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. I got tossed in that lane. <laughs> Banned from the Washington Theater. Yeah, the Washington Theater sucks. I mean, I'm, I don't, I've only been to one show there. I think it was Six Feet Under. And you can't mosh at all. Like, as soon as you see, like, if, as soon as they, like, see any type of mosh activity, they'll grab you and, like, just, like, escort you out they don't even like give you a warning like yeah which is kind of i don't know i was i've never been back since so i don't know i don't think maybe it's like their policy or something i don't know i don't know we were there we were moshing we were like you know, there was a mosh pit stuff so. but i think some of those guys are just racist yeah at least, the guy, that, town, at yeah. least the guy I, I called out you know yeah so yeah no it's i don't know yeah i think I don't know, maybe metal is Flagstaff just... in general is kind of racist. Cause yeah, border towns, yeah. Every time I go to Flagstaff, I always, I always get into like a conflict with somebody, you know? Yeah. Hey, so this uh, next part's going to be the th third part of the interview. It's going to be about an hour long, so just so you know. But here you go. Hope you enjoy. Do you listen to any other like podcasts? Um, when you're driving or just... When you're working on your silversmith stuff, just like Playboy and Penthouse podcasts. Oh, really? Are they pretty good? No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. no, not really. Uh, I can't think of any podcast. No, I'm, I'm a big. I, I listen to a lot of them, man. I think it's mostly like when I'm working out or mm -hmm. driving, because like if I drive to like you know see my parents or drive somewhere far, I'll listen to like one or two. Yeah. I'll watch podcasts. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I think I've watched a few, like, Joe Rogan, and then I'll just watch, like, YouTube videos yeah. on different subjects and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Some of the, uh, the other residents that I work with got, they were telling me one called Dr. Death. Uh-huh. It's, it's really cool. It's kind of scary, though. Yeah? It's about, like, well, it's kind of like an investigative podcast mm -hmm. where they kind of talk about this um, neurosurgeon in Dallas, Texas, how he like botched like multiple surgeries and killed like multiple patients. I think I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. and like he actually like went to prison for it. Wow. But it's kind of it's kind of scary, like because he was actually trying to like get away with it. No, just because it's scary in that like you know this guy 
knew he wasn't a good sur- he knew himself he wasn't good he wasn't a good doctor he wasn't a good surgeon but in his mind he thought like oh it's it's okay I'll I'll, I'll get better you know I'll study more I'll train more and mm-hmm. it'll be okay but it was never okay like he never um, could you know perform like uh, a safe surgery is that what he said or is that what he told himself yeah basically it? when he was on trial like um, mm-hmm. he you don't think he did it because he liked it no I think um, he I think they like interviewed a lot of like his family members mm-hmm. and friend close friends and a lot of them said that like he was just he was always like nervous and he didn't have a lot of confidence in himself yeah and but he was an overachiever at the same time yeah so like he wouldn't he wouldn't let like things you know bring him down like if something like like if something didn't go right he'll like you know and he'll be like oh it's all right and, you know the next one will be better you know like i can always get through this but in his case i think well there was other things on top of it he he would drink and he would do cocaine and like he didn't so there was he wasn't different factors were was affecting him. yeah yeah like he um factors that he could control yeah like he was a total like um drug addict and mm-hmm. um dang like he would like show up to surgeries like hung over and it was like wow i don't know just just that just was just it kind of scared me i'm like damn it's it's people that you know take care of people like yeah can do that can do harm on someone that's just yeah well no it mainly just it kind of i was just thinking about how like like I was thinking, oh, okay, well, I gotta be, you know, prepared, and I can't show up in the morning, you know, like unprepared, or I just, you know, I can't do harm on other people. And yeah, you got human lives on the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. Like if you have a um, on like an iPhone, like it's on like if you just go like on iTunes and then search Doctor Death, it's it's really good. Yeah, I um, you know, when I work. You know, I, I usually don't go to work hungover or anything like that. Yeah. I make sure to try to get, now that I'm in the control room, I try yeah. to get as much rest as I can yeah. before I go into work. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, I have to sit there and monitor all these different screens and yeah, yeah. different equipment and stuff like that. Cause a lot of decision making. Yeah. Really. Now that I'm sitting in the control room, yeah, I have more decision making to make and there's more stuff on my shoulders. And yeah. There's pretty much more responsibility. Yeah. So also making electricity so yeah there's like thousands of homes on the line yeah well not quite a thousand homes on, on the line but you know the whole power system in general you know like if i make a mistake and it ends up tripping off yeah. a certain amount of megawatts yeah like you know that has a direct effect on the whole system at large especially if especially during the summertime yeah. And their you know, electricity's in high demand. Mm-hmm. So, always got to be careful. Yeah, but, it's it. I never know what I'm going to walk into, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think the, the last time I was really, like, really into, like, you know, going out and drinking was probably my third year of, at school. Um, yeah, I think I was just... I don't know. Still trying to like. Oh yeah, yeah, Doctor Death. Yeah, Which one? it's. Uh, I think it's his first one. Or I'll push. Doctor Death is that it? I think it's this one. Yeah, I think it's that Doctor Death. Yeah, it's only like six. There's six parts to it, and each part is like forty minutes. Cool. Mm-hmm. But I listen to a lot of music podcast, like metal podcasts, like yeah, like you know when they interview uh, bands. Um, you know, I would always like, well, no, because I used to always buy like magazines and like read interviews and like find interviews to read online, and mm-hmm. and then I would just like, like the 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 podcast I like is the Jamie Josta podcast the. He's a singer of, you know, Hate Breed. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, he has some really good ones. He, like, interviews a lot of, like, you know, metal bands. Yeah. Uh, like, pretty big metal bands, too. Like, uh, 
I don't know, I think it's just cool, because then kind of hear, you know, like, you know, they're touring, or, you know, like, they're, if they have, like, a new album, they'll, like, talk about that, like, I don't know, I think I'm just, like, just kind of a nerd, and I gotta know more than just, you know, the the music, I just kind of know kind of more, like, what went into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I like that, and then there's, like, a skateboarding podcast I like, just because, like, all they do is talk about skateboarding. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's cool. I don't skateboard that much anymore, I mean, but... Oh, yeah, it's a skateboard out. Yeah. Um, I had this machine made for my daughter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Dead Punk. Yeah, the Dead Punk skateboards. Yeah. So the grip tape's all c- custom. Oh, cool. The bottom design's all custom. Nice. The boards he has made out of Canada maple wood or something yeah. like that. He you, yeah. Them, he bought the trucks and put them on there. Yeah, these are the best trucks, independent. The wheels go in the dark. Spitfire wheels. Yeah. Nice. The thing's like super smooth. And yeah. It had a board made for my, bro- my son too. Yeah. But that was just like at a... What are those industrial shops? Oh yeah. shops. Yeah. And my daughter, she showed enough interest for me to buy her a board, so... Nice. Yeah, yeah, I've seen, yeah, I've seen the Dead Pond guy, like, he mostly sells at powwows. Yeah. Uh, which is cool, I mean, I think that's a good way to, like, introduce skateboarding to, you know, casual people, because mm-hmm. I think when I got into skateboarding, like, I was scared to death to walk into a skate shop, because it's kind of intimidating, you know, when you yeah. go to skate shops, because they're, like, older dudes, and, like, I it's was always... A different scene. Yeah, like, I was always afraid of, like, well, I mean... I think I just didn't want people to think I was a poser. Like, yeah. I didn't want to walk in and be like, oh, you know, like... So I, I don't think... Yeah, I think I avoided... I always wanted to go into a skate shop and... I think I would go in, but I wouldn't talk. I would just go in and just look around and... Just yeah. kind of like... You know, kind of be fascinated with everything. Yeah. But no, this is cool. This is a good way to get people into skateboarding. Like, yeah. Um, but, uh... Yeah, yeah, skateboarding is like... I don't know, I think it's a good, it's like a good, not sport, but like, you know, activity for people. I had a, I found a skateboard one time in a, in a ditch. Yeah. Kind of like a gutter, and that was my skateboard, the only skateboard. Yeah, I remember you had one at the dorm. <laughs> the, yeah. It was like a Rudy Johnson board. I don't remember what it was, but I think that's, it was never bought. It was, a, yeah, it. It was a girl girl skateboard, Rudy Johnson. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a, like a legit board, like a legit company too. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> that's no. kind of funny because like I never knew that. Yeah. 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 I still kind of follow like I used before I would like read like Thrasher magazine a lot and I would like watch skateboarding videos, but now everything's just on the internet. And, like, yeah. YouTube. Like, all the content is just online and got the like, still magazines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't have to do that anymore. Uh, actually, I don't really buy. I, I'll, every now and then, I'll buy a magazine just to kind of yeah, just to kind of like see what's up. But no, I mean, I don't really follow it that close. Yeah. Um, I kind of like. I still have a board, but I, I'll, I'll cruise around. Like I'll, um, my my day off the other day, I just went to the park in Scottsdale. Mm-hmm. Just cruised around for like an hour, but then. I don't know, I was just too sick, like, I, I had, like, sore throat and I had a headache, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, I better get off my board, I'm gonna hurt myself. I thought I could get back into it. Yeah. Until I, um, were in Tempe, and, um, I was riding my son's board, and that's when I was taking him almost every other, every other day, you know, to the skate park, and I was riding at the same time, you know, whenever they take a break, I would ride, and then just kind of cruise, cruise the ramps and stuff, and I went down, uh, one ramp, and then I went down another ramp, so I was going super fast, and it freaking wrecked. Oh, no. The board got all squirrely on me. Yeah, the fishtail. So, yeah. yeah, so it flipped out from underneath, and I flew. I went and hit my head. Boom. Yeah. And I got up, and I was like, fuck. And this little young guy's like, you okay? He's all trying to check up on me. I was like, yeah, I'm all right. I just got it real quick. Got on the board. And I was all dizzy. I was like, fuck this, man. <laughs> 
I said, nope, I can't fucking skateboard, man. Yeah. It hurts too much now. <laughs> when you were, like, when I was in high school, like, you, like, you could fall and, like, you get up and, like, you, like, it doesn't hurt. Like, I don't know, it's weird. And, like, the only time it would hurt is if you would hit your head or twist an ankle really bad or, yeah, like, break a bone. But, yeah, but, yeah, now, like, if I fall, I'm the same way. Like, yeah. it just, yeah, it hurts. Like, my whole body will hurt. Yep. Um, the worst is, like, when you fall and then, like, you feel, like, the... Like, a, I don't know how to, how to explain it. It's like a, a jolt of electricity will just kind of like, you'll feel it through your whole body. Uh -huh. I think that's like maybe a mini, like a concussion yeah. type of uh, symptom. Yeah, I kind of blacked out for a second. Like I saw stars and stuff and I could taste blood in my mouth. I like, <laughs> oh, fuck. No. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think my reaction is not fast enough to catch myself now. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, I, I, just, was, I was pretty good shape then too, you know. Yeah, like three years ago I was pretty good shape. Before my my uh, my youngest was born. Yeah, that's a good board. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I wish I could do more fun stuff like that, skateboard. Like I don't know, but I feel like studying is kind of like my priority. I try to make it a priority every day, like at least an hour a day. Yeah. Um. And then we have like these like test que like questions, like practice questions. Mm -hmm. Like I try to do at least 10 of them a day. Yeah. And doing 10 of those takes an hour, so. But I know I gotta step it up once the test is coming. I'm gonna have to like start doing like 100 questions a day. Wow. Because the actual board exam, I think it's like, well, all the board exams I've had so far, they're like eight hour tests. Mm -hmm. And every hour you have 40 minutes to, no, you have 40 questions every for one hour, mm -hmm. and it's an eight hour test, so it's like eight times 40, so you have like 300 and something questions. Yeah. So, yeah, I, once the test date gets closer, I'm gonna like really study, like, yeah, it's, it's all like, it's kind of like an endurance, like a marathon, you know, like, yeah. you really gotta like, be able to like sit and read all those questions and think through them for eight hours. Mm -hmm. So really, it's mo mostly conditioning. You got to condition your brain your mind. to, like, yeah, to like to do all those questions and get get them done in a quick enough time. Yeah. Um, I think one of the most studying that I did out of high school was for the job that I'm doing. Yeah. Which is um, becoming a, a power plant operator, and I started up at NGS Navajo Generating Station, which is in Page, and they have an operation school there. And it's a seven-week school, and you have to pass. Um, if you fail three classes, they walk you out the gate. But if you if you're able to pass, you know, um, the three classes. Well, if you're able to pass like five classes, I mean, you're pretty much in. But within those weeks, those those first weeks, you know, they just cram a bunch of information on you. So you're studying up until like twelve o'clock at night, mm -hmm. one o'clock at night, then you get in by like four o'clock and going back into the classroom and learning some more again. I think that was like the most I ever really studied. Mm -hmm. And then the last week they study, they, take, they, they um, make you study on everything. And then there's another, if you pass that, there's another four weeks, you have to go back to school again for more training for operations. And then like, and then if you want to move up, there's another four week class. And if you want to move up again, there's another five week class. So. Yeah. And there's a lot of self-study and, you know, so, you know how big the, the power plant is mm -hmm. by the engineering station, I pretty much know that place like the back of my hand now, mm -hmm. you know, pretty much all the systems and everything. And then when I came down here, I had to relearn and reteach myself everything, mm -hmm. the whole power, not a whole other power plant system. Did they give you like books or like Yeah, you had to do like self-study, then you had to like walk down the whole area. And oh, okay follow all these little lines and stuff, know where each and every little line goes. Yeah. Then you have to study like the, the parameters of, you know, where like a number should be, you know, okay. a certain pH or a certain pressure or a yeah. certain temperature. Yeah. Do they give you like a study book to, to read off of or? Not really, they kind of just give you like these handbooks and stuff. Oh, okay. And you gotta find the information in there. Okay. Yeah. Are the questions like multiple choice questions or? Um, kind of. Um, 
No, actually, they're more like you have to explain every little detail. Oh, okay. Yeah. The lot of question, and then you get to explain every little detail. Okay. Where exactly, you know, a piece of equipment is, or what exactly it does, how it's related to the whole system at large. Yeah. And then you have to go to your superior, which is like a control room operator, and then you have to go to a supervisor, and then, you know, do the same questions with them. And then if they think, if the control room operator and the supervisor thinks you're, you're, you know, you have that system down, then they'll sign it off for you. What they call it is a job performance measurement. Okay. And you have like, well, I had like over 20, like almost close to 30, 30 of those. So it took me like three or four years to actually just become a control operator once I came down here. Mm -hmm. And if I would have stayed up there and have a generating station, I probably would have been a control operator within eight years. Yeah. Like, since I came down here, it took me an extra couple of years to become a control yeah. operator. I had to relearn a whole different system and stuff. Yeah. But that was the extent of my studying and stuff. And then my other studying is, of course, silversmithing. Yeah. Yeah. So I do a lot of self studying here. Yeah. That's you ever go on YouTube to watch? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's how I, I learned a lot of the stuff that I do now. I learned from YouTube. Yeah. Not only from other Navajo silversmiths, but just yeah. regular silversmiths and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I watch YouTube a lot, just learning. Well, there's a lot of like tutorials for like stuff I gotta study, and mm -hmm. um, my dad watches YouTube a lot just to like fix cars, <coughs> um, project like home projects. Um, yeah. So you said like so now we're generating station in Page, right? Yeah. Okay. That place is shutting down. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 How long were you in Page? We were there for. Like six, six or seven years. Okay. About six years, I think. Okay. Yeah. And um, well, we've been down here for like four years now. Okay. Close to five years. Yeah. Yeah. You said Paige, you went to a lot of metal shows. Was it coming here or going to Flag or? Yeah. yeah okay. Coming <laughs> here, coming to Flag. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember like because my parents live in Holbrook. <coughs> I would go visit them, like, because I was in North, North Dakota for med school. Mm -hmm. If I had, like, a month off or something, I would just come back and... Hang out. Yeah, if there was a show, I would drive to Phoenix, and then I would, like, rent a motel, just because I didn't want to drive, like, the next, that same night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would do that a lot. There was a, shows, there would be shows, like, in Gallup, too, I would try to check out. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, they'd be canceled the, day, the night before, <laughs> like... Wow. Like I would like be ready to go, and then luckily there's like Facebook, and then yeah, would be like oh show's canceled, and I'm like oh shit, okay, yeah. It's weird. There's a lot of like big bands that stop in like Window Rock and Gallup and Blackstaff. Yeah, yeah. Like I uh, was it um I think it was Testament. Testament was that like Navajo Nation Fair. Yeah. Which is big. I mean, that's that's pretty big. Yeah. I think Anthrax too was there yeah, the year been, before. Yeah, Anthrax. Yep. Yeah. And then I know Soulfly will do shows, like uh, like at Winter Rock. They always go to the, yeah. They always go to the rest. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I like Soulfly. Soulfly is cool. Yeah. I remember they were like really like they were like new metal like when they first started. Yeah. Like they they would like have a lot of rapping and like uh, just like you know that that. Riffs that are like um, hip hop riffs, almost. Yeah, but they always put on like high energy shows. So everybody would. Yeah. You know? yeah. And plus, they were part of um, Sopatura. Yeah. So, yeah. So just they, being associated with that, everybody went. Yeah, all the old old like Sopatura fans would, you know, yeah, just by, um, yeah, by association. Yeah. Would check out Soulfly. That's where I saw a lot of my shows was on on the res, you know. Like whenever there was a show, we'd try to make it out there. Yeah. Because there was nothing else to do. Yeah. Or we'd make our own shows. Yeah. And, um, like in high school, and, you know, just doing reckless stuff. Mm hmm And after high school, you know, playing different shows with a res metal band. Mm hmm And then 2005, 2006, I got married. And, um, 2007, I had my daughter. 
after that, we pretty much just stayed in Blandy, Utah. Oh, okay. All the way up until 2008, 2009. And I, like, being up there, you know, it's pretty much no, no metal, no really, like, so, like, nothing, no introduction to anything new. Yeah. So from, like, 2007 all the way to, like, 2010, you know, I hardly listened to any metal. Oh, yeah, just the same old yeah, stuff, yeah. Until I started going back. And back. So until I started going back, until I moved to Page, like, in 2009. Yeah. And I started getting back into the scene a little bit more. Yeah. 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 Now I was always just, like, a, like a, like a fan. Yeah. I mean, it's easy now with, like, internet and, mm -hmm. like, social media. Yeah. The only, the way I figure out, I like, uh, the way I find new bands is, like, I'll find like which record label they're on and just kind of mm. like follow the record label. And like Century Media? And yeah, there's one um, called 20 Bucks Spin. Uh -huh. Dude, they, everything they put out is like gold. Like, yeah. They don't, they, don't, they, don't put out, they don't put out bullshit. Uh, yeah. Like it seems like everything they put out is just like, like whoever like, who's whoever run, is running that like record label, like they, they have really good taste and like they just, they don't put out bullshit. Yeah. So that, that's a really good one. Actually, that band that's playing at um, Rebel Lounge, I think they're 20 bucks spin. Yeah. Yeah. Spirit of Drift. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of... And then, like, I listen to a lot of, like, podcasts or... I try to go to, like, shows and try to get there early to check out the opening band, but yeah. a lot of times I never do because I'm too busy and I get there and, like, like you know, the, the opening band's already finished. Mm-hmm. I like kind of like a lot of rock and roll, like melodic metal. Yeah. There's one band called um, Chrome Division. Oh, I don't think I've heard of them. It's, a, it's an offshoot of um, Suspiria and Demi Bilrio. Okay. Um, what was that guy's name from Demi Bilrio? Like the guitar singer, Shagrath. Uh huh. He created this band. Well, I don't know if he created it himself, but he put all these other um, black metal bands together and they made a rock, kind of like a rock and roll mm -hmm. metal yeah. band, and it's just fucking, all their albums are all fucking badass. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like a rock and roll, heavy metal slash uh, motorcycle game <laughs> band, you know? Yeah. And it's just fucking rad, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like anything now. Before, I think before I was always like, you have to stay in a certain clique. And yeah, stay, I would only listen genre. to a certain genre, but now yeah. I, I listen to anything. I, I like yeah. Breaking Benjamin, they're like new metal kind of. Yeah. Avenged Sevenfold. Um, well, At the Gates is probably the best. I think they're the all time best. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I just like, try to. Like Volbeat and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I haven't really heard too much Volbeat, but. The older I, stuff is better. Okay. Yeah, than the last album that came out with. And it took me a while to get into Volbeat, but after that, man, I was like, fuck yeah, man. This is yeah. kind of like kick ass gym rock, you know? Yeah. It's just kind of fun, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I found it, well, when I, do, when I study, I listen to music, and mm -hmm. um, there's one band I found called uh, Creeping Death. Oh, yeah. I think they're from like Texas or something. Dude, they're, they're really good. Like, yeah. I don't Are they a co cover band? No, they're like a hardcore. They're like a hardcore band. Yeah. But like you know, with like a, like like a death metal like singer. Yeah. But I think it's more hardcore. Like I've never. I guess I never really got into hardcore, you know. Yeah. Um, but I guess so. The hardcore is still it's kind of new to me. But yeah, they're really good. I've been jamming a lot of um, female fronted bands too lately. Oh yeah. Like uh, in this moment. Oh yeah. And. Um, what was the other one? Mm, Dorothy and that was another one. What was her name? Lizzie Hale. Lizzie. Yeah, yeah. What was her? What was the band that they call? Hailstorm. Hail, okay. Hailstorm. It's just a, like like that. You know, you can't really sing along. You know, but mm -hmm. it's like fucking like fuck yeah. You know, they're mm -hmm. all fucking all jamming out and stuff. Yeah. And some of that stuff is just kind of like real. Um, subversive, you know, some of the lyrics and stuff. Yeah, or I think the, I'm more... Or the way they sing, you yeah. know, I was like, fuck yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'm more, like, aware now. I, I kind of, like, I'm more... 
conscious of like lyrics now and like you know stuff that people like sing about yeah or i mean i try to be yeah if i look at the cover and it just looks too gnarly i'm like eh, probably not I'm, i don't know i, I kind of like i kind of draw the line sometimes trying to be too hardcore or something i think mostly because i've seen too many people die in the hospital and i think when people all sing about mutilating you know they don't really dead have bodies or something know, they don't have a really you know, like good day. Yeah. They don't really actually know what it actually is. You know, yeah. Or how it, it is in reality. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really, like... Like, I've listened to Kennel Corpse in the past, but I've never bought an album. You know? Uh-huh. So I've never actually, like, listened to it and actually... Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're actually gnarly. Like, yeah. I think when they, um, Chris Barnes, you know, he's the Six Feet Under yeah. lead singer. Back in the Chris Barnes era, they were, like, they would sing about some weird stuff, like... Yeah. Like rape and like mostly like violence against women it seemed like. Yeah. But then I think now that they have a new singer, um, they kinda cleaned up their their lyrics. I mean they still talk about like killing and stuff like that, but it's not targeted towards um, you know, women or yeah or children. Yeah. Um Yeah, stuff with children and the women though for me is like like no, I can't listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of stupid, you know? Yeah. Um, and then for a while there, I was like turned off from black metal because there's a lot of black metal bands that, you know, associate themselves with, um, like, uh, um, Nazism. Nazism. Or... Nazism yeah. Stuff like that. <laughs> and not only that, but, you know, some of them claim to be satanic and like, well, what the fuck if you're satanic, you know, it means you're Christian. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. You're acknowledging on the devil. Them, yeah. You're acknowledging the devil, you know, because the devil's a Christian. A Christian um, construct, you know, yeah. it's part of part of being a Christian is you believe in the devil, and so that always kind of like kind of cracked me up. Yeah, when people claim to be satanic. It's oh well, you're Christian too then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Never thought about it like that. Yeah, yeah, because then they're yeah they're acknowledging they're acknowledging that Christianity that God or there is a Satan. Or yeah, God. yeah. Unless they're agnostic or they just don't believe yeah. in God or or the devil themselves, you know. Yeah. You know what band I really like? Um, Gojira. Gojira. Yeah. I've heard of them, but I've never. Really yeah, they're, to they're like hippies. They like they, they sound really heavy, but then their lyrics are like about like the environment and mm -hmm. you know just basically how not to be a shitty person. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I like them. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I I uh, I basically so I usually go to Z a lot. And mm -hmm. If I see like. So some of the bands that I ignored like previously, I'm starting to go. I'm starting to go back and get into. Yeah. Like um, all that remains and unearth. Like. Yeah. Because I think when they first came out, I kind of ignored them just because. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe just because the way they looked. They're under that label that. Metalcore. Metal yeah. Metal yeah. Metalcore. Yeah. Yeah. I think I kind of ignored them, mm -hmm. and then as they lay dying too, I think I, I ignored them when they first came out. Yeah. But um, dude, they're they're really good. Trivium was a good band that came out for a while. Yeah, Trivium, yeah. I don't know what happened to them, though. I think, um, yeah, I mean, their last two albums weren't that good. I mean, I didn't think they were that good. Yeah. Their last good album was, uh, well, for me, it was, I think, how was it called? Um, Crusade or something? The, it was like 2013. It was like my first year of the year I, I um, moved to North Dakota. It was, um, I forget what it was called. I think it's Vengeance Falls, I think. Uh -huh. Well, it came out in 2013. I like that one. The Crusade is a good album, too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they they kind of like, um, you know, they haven't really like become like a headline. Well, I guess they headline most of the time, but like they're not really like as big as like Avenged Sevenfold. Oh, yeah, the Crusade is an old band or old. Yeah, yeah. I think it's called Vengeance Falls. The Sin and the Sentence. No. You know, it talks about in Waves. No. Ascendancy. No. Silence in the Snow. 2013. Yeah, Vengeance Falls. Yeah, Vengeance Falls. Yeah, that one's, that one's good. I think it was produced by uh, the David Draymond, the singer of Disturbed. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why it's so good. I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, I wanted to ask about because, like, you know how I... Um, I saw, I was, so I saw like uh, the Iced Earth um, Facebook and I saw that 
you had, you had, he had your bracelet. Yeah. Yeah. How did that come about? I always want to know, hear that story. Well, I've always listened to Ice Dare since 2000. Yeah, I remember. The year 2000, yeah, pretty since, much. Since we're, I, I remember when we were in the dorm together. Yeah, so it's 2000 I started listening to them because that was my freshman year in high school in Kianta. And I traded um, my buddy, who was a metalhead. Um, I had a queen, a queen double disc CD. I traded him with Ice Earth and he gave me two CDs. The, the Purgatory albums and um, The Days of Purgatory and Something Wicked This Way Comes. Yeah. So I had those two albums and I started listening to those religiously. And yeah. I totally got into them. I was fucking in love with them. And um, so I listened to them all throughout high school. Got all my cousin brothers into them. You know, listened to every, bought every album, bought every, listened to every album and stuff. And um, so finally, I went to the concert, their second concert that I've seen here in the Valley, which was, in, which was last year. Mm -hmm. Was it last year? I believe it was last year. Mm -hmm. And after the concert, you know, well, during the concert, you know, I put on my, my rock star bracelet. Yeah. You know, and I wore it into the mosh pit and everything like that. <laughs> and, you know, so it was all, you know, it was mosh pit, you know. Yeah. It was blessed in the mosh pit and stuff. Yeah, you're, you're there, you're dressed for battle. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And so, so after it was all done, we waited outside by their bus and stuff. Yeah. And uh, Stu Block came out first. Yeah. I was like, hey, Stu, you know, I started talking to him. He was all chill, you know. Yeah. I was, hey, Stu, you know, I want to give you something, you know, because, you know, I really admire your singing, you know, you, the way you, you know, because, you know, he's been on a couple albums already. Yeah, because, like, I remember, um, because it was Matt, Barlow, Matt yeah, Barlow, Barlow yeah. was the singer first, right? Yeah. Or he was one of the, one of the main earlier singers. singers. Yeah. And then he left. And then it was the singer of um, Judas Priest. Yeah, Tim Owens. Tim, Tim Owens. Tim Owens. Yeah, and then is that a after him? Was that yeah. when Stu Block, Stu Block came on? Yeah. Okay. And so I, I gifted him a, a silver chain. Yeah. One of my first silver chains that I made, I gifted that to him. And he was all blown away. I said, hey, I, I got something for John, and I'd like to present it to him. He goes, okay. You know, he's all pumped up. So he goes back into the venue, you know, comes back out with John. So I started talking to John Schaefer and um, so I tell him, I said, yeah, tell him about Navajo, yeah. tell him about turquoise, tell him about like, you know, what it represents to our people and I was yeah. about the bracelet. Yeah. I was just probably just describing the bracelet you told. And I said, well, John, I said, I'm going to tell you something. You know, I made this because it's, I call it the rock star bracelet because it has spikes. Not only that, because it has spikes, but it's, you know, true to my native Navajo yeah. designs. So I took it off and I said, I want to give this to you. Yeah. And he's all like standing there, he's all blown away. He's like, yeah. oh, really? I'm like, yeah, he put it on. You know, I made it fit him and everything. Like so I want you to keep it, you know, it's my gift to you for yeah. for helping me get through all the hard times in my life. Yeah. Because your music was there, you know, not only with Iced Earth, but with Demons and Wizards. Mm -hmm. You know, because I remember specific times in my life where yeah. you know, it helped me get through a hard time or I was there during the good times, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, parting out or just hanging out with my cousin brothers and mm -hmm. having a ball, you know. And so, after that, you know, we exchanged uh, emails and numbers. So he emailed me later on. We'll all going to be back in town at this time and like to get together. So okay, cool. So he came back in town, and I met with him down in the Ath out in Anthem, close to Anthem, like Deer Valley. Mm -hmm. And he was there with one of his buddies, and his buddy is actually the one that does all the artwork for Iced Earth mm -hmm. since um, the Days of Purgatory album, mm -hmm. which was you know it's part of the Spawn. Oh yeah, Spawn yeah. era. That's, yeah, I remember that. The, the Dark Saga and stuff. And he used to be um, one of the drawers, one of the artists for um, for Spawn. Yeah. For um, what was his name? Todd McFarlane. McFarlane. Yeah. yeah. So he used to be one of his artists. I was like, damn, I was all blown away. And, I was like, and then he, like, redid all the art and stuff for, like, Heisters and stuff. Yeah. So I met him also and um, had him sign the album covers. And then we worked out the, the um, badass motherfucking, the Raven. Yeah. The Raven bracelet, which had five large uh, black onyx stones and eight smaller uh, black onyx stones and 18 spikes mm -hmm. all the way around. 
was like two and a half inches wide, mm -hmm. six inches long all the way around, six and a quarter, I think. Mm -hmm. And that was a big ass fucking bracelet. Mm -hmm. And I worked on it all summer last year. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did that. And he came down in September and I presented that to him. Well, I sent it to him. He came down and we visited for a while. Took him on a tour to Monument Valley. Yeah. Took him all through Navajo land, you know, yeah. him, give him the whole Navajo tour. Yeah. Tell him about Navajo history and everything like that. Yeah. And then um, took him all the way back to Sedona where he was staying. I spent the night at his um his apartment, not his apartment, but his Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been kept in contact since then. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, he gave me some stones that I still have to work with mm -hmm. to make him a pendant. So I'm like, I gotta make this kick ass fucking pendant for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, That's awesome. Yeah, I have his, I have his, I have his like number and his, his WhatsApp and his email and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Lately he's been pretty busy. Yeah, I know they, they had a new album out, was it uh, last year, right? The... Incorruptible? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's dude, the, the singer sounds just like uh, Barlow. Yeah. That's like it's crazy. Yeah. Like, he has more of like almost like sharper edge, you know. Mm -hmm. And he has a, like a really wide range. He's just like Matt, Matthew Barlow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty badass. Yeah. No, I mean, I I, I remember like when uh, when we were roommates of the dorm, I got like got into him there, and then I kind of like didn't really pay attention to them after a while, and then yeah, till like uh, like their last album. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know. I definitely gotta go back and check it out. Check out some more. Yeah, they had a few albums, I guess, that weren't really that too good. Mm -hmm. And even you know, John Schaefer said himself as well. You know, so that was only a good place at that time. I guess he had like several family members pass away and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but the last like two, three albums have been just been fucking awesome, man. Yeah, for and sure. Especially with Stu Block. Yeah, I uh, I listened to the the incorruptible the other day, and there's a track where they have like a native like a native chanting in yeah, the background. Yeah, the ghost that, dance. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's like instrumental with like the natives chanting in the back. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, fuck yeah, it's all badass. Yeah. Yeah. So he's creating more music now, and he's like, he's all inspired because he's like, you know, he's been down in Sedona and also back on the Navajo land. So oh, okay. He's been listening to a lot of native flute. Mm -hmm. um, music and also I showed him a little bit of the NAC and mm -hmm. some like Navajo tunes and squad ants tunes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's all inspired. He's all like, yeah, man, I want to write some more stuff about Native Americans, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I remember back in the um, something we could this way comes. There's a song called Consequences, where he actually like you know, puts like a nod out to like, Native Americans, you know. Mm -hmm. A little, little bit of the lyric there that was like, um, what do you say? A race of people murdered, another one enslaved. Like he was talking about, you know, American history, mm -hmm. where like a whole, you know, race of people were murdered. Mm -hmm. Talking specifically about Native Americans, and other ones enslaved and stuff. Because, mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, whoa. And then he's just like talking about the consequences of like, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever you're doing and stuff like that. Specifically towards like uh, the United States and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, no, that's cool. If he, yeah, I'm gonna check out his new album. I like, yeah, I like it when bands like acknowledge natives, especially at the show or um, yeah. in their music or or in their lyrics. I don't know. I know Soulfly is really good at it. Like the last uh, Soulfly album had like um, some Navajo singers. Yeah. In the, like in the beginning of the song, the ritual yeah. song. Even in uh, Slayer too. Oh yeah. Yeah, one of their songs. He's all talking about something about genie or something like yeah. that, and then it comes into the Slayer song. Uh huh. Yeah. The consequences is like because he wrote about it in history as if it's all okay. A race of people murdered, another one enslaved. Now our world crumbles, it's happening within. Open your eyes, open your eyes and realize the world we're living in. Because, oh, you ought to know. Mm -hmm. Goes off from there. Mm -hmm. 
that Slayer song. I don't remember what that Slayer song was called. Yeah, yeah I'll, I have a yeah. lot of Slayer on my phone. I gotta go back and check it out. You ever hear that, um, that, um, Testament Native Blood? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. music, yeah, that's awesome. Because the, the singer's native, right? From, like, yeah. I forgot, the tribe in the California. singer and also the guitarist. Yeah. Um, wasn't Alex Sullivan? No. Was the other one? Peterson? Um, yeah, Eric Pe Peterson. Yeah. Yeah. No, I gotta check out, I, I, I wanna like find out some more like native bands. Like, I saw one band open for Slayer last year, not Slayer, Soulfly last year. Yeah. Um, Six Million Dead. Yeah. Ever heard them? Like they're like pretty local. Dude, they're, they're, they're badass. They're, I think they're from like the um, Gila River, Tahona Odom tribe. Yeah. Well, I think most of the mem most of the band members are, but dude, they're, they're like, um, they're like death metal, like, you know, <clears throat> like black metal, death metal type yeah. of uh, style. Yeah. Um, they sound kind of like, um, like, you know, those really like, like those black death metal bands, like Incantation and like, um, um, yeah, I think Incantation is the only, like the one band I can think of that they kind of sound like. an angel possessed. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of like have a thrashy sound. Um, okay. Yeah. They, um. Cause I went to go see Soulfly last year with Nile mm -hmm. um, at Marquee Theater, and I got there kind of early, but I was just fucking off, like looking at the merch. And I think I, I think I heard their music, and I'm like, damn, that sounds really good. And then I went over to check it out, and then the all natives like were playing on stage. Wow. Um, they, there's a band called uh, Abysmal Dawn. I think they're mm -hmm. from like California. In my mind, I'm like, well, like was Abysmal Dawn added to the to the freaking like show? So I walked in watch their show and I'm like damn these guys are awesome and I think they did like a Slayer cover at the very end and yeah I was like holy shit and this, these are these are really good and I think I bought their CD at the show and yeah yeah I do they're really good there's actually like a whole like native I think every year they put on a whole native um, concert where there's nothing but na native metal bands yeah that play one of these venues downtown oh okay yeah I better look out for that I know, I gotta look out for that too. I haven't been missing it for the last few years. Hmm. That'd be fucking badass to me. Check yeah. it out, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I gotta like keep a look out and put it on my calendar. Yeah. Damn, it's kinda, it sucks now like with my residency, like so much stuff goes to our email and if I, f if I miss an email, dude, they get mad at me. They're like, wow. dude, like, why didn't you do this? This is, and then they'll like make an announcement to everyone and be like, you guys are, professionals now this is how the workplace like you know communicates so you can't be ignoring your emails so you have to take your work home yeah so I'll constantly be on, on like uh, an alert yeah yeah wow. so I, I gotta be aware of like deadlines and stuff like that okay. that would suck because like as soon as I go out the gates man I'm, uh -huh. I don't think about work you know, I don't yeah. worry about what happened that day or any fuck ups I had you know yeah well, if I'm stressed out, you know, I just leave it at work. Yeah. When I come home, you know, mm -hmm. it's all about the kids. And yeah. Hanging out. And, you know, I stress it out more about this stuff here at home. Yeah. My silver work. Yeah. What I do about work. Well, that's cool, man. It's, do you have a lot of, like, orders coming up? or? Yeah, I have uh, the whole list right there. Oh, really? Dang. Yeah, about uh, seven orders to catch up on. Okay. So for whole, everything in May, you know, was all busy. Mm -hmm. So I told everybody, said, I'm not taking the orders until June. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. How many hours do you spend working on? Like, the Rockstar your... bracelet, I'll, I'll take maybe three weeks mm -hmm. for a Rockstar bracelet. Three to four weeks. These Rockstar bracelets have actually been kind of... I kept having the orders, and then I keep having, like, my job getting in the way. And then I keep having, like, um... Um, shows that I need to go to to sell jewelry at and stuff so I have to make inventory for that so these these rockstar bracelets right here have been all the ones I've been working on since this 
beginning of this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. There's four of them. Four of them here. And, uh, this is going to be one of them. Oh, nice. And these are the spikes here. That's cool. The spikes are going to How many do you put on? Um, Two, four, six. There's like all 12, the way around? Yeah, there's going to be 12 in that one. On that one bracelet. Yeah. And then there has to be um, 16 on these two large ones. Okay. So I have to make some more more um, spikes to put on these large ones. Because mm -hmm. I didn't have enough. Mm -hmm. Nice. Actually, I made one Rockstar bracelet. And I finished up the... Um, the um, what I call the badass motherfucking... Badass motherfucker uh, mm -hmm. Rockstar bracelet. Mm -hmm. Which had 18 spikes and that had uh, King and Turquoise on it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and that was a huge bracelet too. Mm -hmm. Another huge one that they made for um, a customer out of Washington, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You just mail it to them like when you're done? Or? Yeah, I mailed it to them. Okay. Make sure to put on a bunch of uh, insurance. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, I'll probably head out in a little while, but um, yeah, thanks for letting me come here, come here and just hang out. Oh yeah, no problem at all, yeah. but... I'm gonna edit this, so I'll probably add some music to it. So what's your goal with the whole podcast? Today? Just for fun. Just for fun. Just for like, fun. Mostly just to like... How much of an audience do you like? Oh, I don't, I don't have any audience. Yeah. I think it's just me so yeah. far. It's just for fun. Just something to do like when I'm not like studying. Yeah. Just because like, like the freaking like residency is so like stressful. stressful yeah like i don't have a lot of like fun stuff to do outside mm -hmm. like i can't really like you know like i work out that's probably about it yeah but it's mostly just for fun just to like try to do stuff like the things i do most outside of like you know work is i go to a lot of concerts and mm -hmm. i like listen to music all the time so yeah might as well just do something like try to be more like involved you know Mm -hmm. Well, I mostly just want to talk to like the bands from the res. It's yeah, kind of like my goal. A lot of the bands from the res they have like Facebook pages. Yeah, they have Instagram pages now. Yeah, and then some of them have YouTube pages. Yeah. So I think uh, social media would be a good thing. Like if you want yeah. to, yeah, yeah, reach out and also kind of like have get, build a listener audience. Yeah, would be you get like a Facebook page, which yeah. is free. Yeah, Instagram page which is free a YouTube page which is free yeah and then you know there's a lot of people yeah that do like reviews yeah like even first listener reviews uh -huh. on songs and stuff like that on YouTube and they're big you know yeah just like reaction videos mm -hmm. yeah and I've watched a lot of them too yeah and yeah. um so you can like you know build a name pick out a name Name in your podcast. Oh yeah, I already got a name. Yeah, yeah. It's just called Res Metal. Res, Res Metal, Metal Podcast. Res yeah. Metal Podcast. You know, Res Metal Podcast. You know, Facebook page. Yeah. Instagram. Page. I need a logo. I need a logo. That's the thing. Yeah. I made one on like my power. Like I need to figure out how to work with Photoshop because mm -hmm. I did one because like, I can do PowerPoint stuff, but yeah, I don't know. I got to figure out Photoshop and then I can try to make one, mm -hmm. make a legit one. Yeah. I had a lady make mine. Oh yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> Most of the sales that I make are yeah. on um, Instagram. Okay. So this is Instagram. Okay. And these are stories right here. You know, yeah. They post like 15 seconds stories or whatever they feel like putting on there, you know. You know, snapshots of your life, whatever you're doing, some of your paintings, whatever. Like this is guys, high level silversmith. He's actually um, in Asia right now, doing a tour with all his like um, his jewelry and stuff. Mm -hmm. This guy's um, like world renowned. This is like a lady that's her husband's um, mm -hmm. uh, makes movies and stuff. This lady does hair, makeup. This is one of my my um, one of my um, customers right here. That old guy. And this guy is another silversmith that I follow. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but 
but yeah, you know, you follow certain people and yeah. you'll see their, their feed, the pictures, yeah. and then they'll have like a little, a little spiel, you know, mm-hmm. a little explanation of who they are, or mm-hmm. you know, what the picture's about or stuff. When you go to your own story here, so I have 565 posts. Mm-hmm. I have 3,635 followers mm-hmm. that actually see my stuff. And most of them, well, some of them interact and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they'll, so I'll put a post up and they'll like them. They can like them. You know, you can see the likes, they'll comment. They'll comment on them. Mm-hmm. And then you interact with them at the same time and then you know and then they can message you mm-hmm. so you go up here they'll message you and then I can I sell stuff just mm-hmm. like that you know yeah I message you the price so oh, I'll use PayPal or Square you know they'll give me that PayPal information mm-hmm. and I'll send an invoice or they'll or they'll pay me directly and stuff then I'll just send the, the joy to them mm-hmm and that's how I make the majority of my sales. But if you want to do it like on a podcast and stuff, you know, you make your whole... Yeah, yeah, the page, yeah. You make the page, and then you make a link of um, where you want it to go. Right here, I have my buddy's um, cancer page up. Mm-hmm. His GoFundMe page. Mm-hmm. And then... But that can be a link to your podcast. Yeah, yeah. That's where you listen to it. Yeah. SoundCloud. Yeah, you know, I, it's mostly just SoundCloud, yeah. Like, and then you post a picture and then, you know, of the band, whoever it is, and then yeah. post a description, you know, like you can make it long or short, yeah. you know. Then the hashtags help you get seen and stuff. Yeah. It's mostly just been, I'll just go to shows and just talk about the shows. and Yeah. Dude, I go to so many shows here, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and you can do like reviews and stuff like that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll probably like um, I'll probably edit this like shit. I gotta work tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow after work, I'll probably edit it and try to. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get it like on like the SoundCloud thing. Maybe like tomorrow night or something. Because mm-hmm. then I gotta.